Well, since the door's closed, I might as well at least start with a few plugs because um, we've got a few things going on uh, this convention and um, immediately following uh, our presentation, um, if you want and you really have burning questions that aren't answered in the last 15 minutes of our presentation when I ask you guys to come up and ask questions, uh, you can uh, grab one of our panelists, try not to grab too hard, and um, maybe you can uh, ask them some questions and, uh, and uh, we can kind of keep the party going outside. But um, uh, the last 15 minutes of the presentation, I'm inviting you all to come up to that mic right over there. And uh, so get your, formulate what you want to talk to us about. And uh, immediately following uh, this presentation right here, and as uh, quick as I can get to it, I'm going to be doing a storyboarding demo at the Combined uh, Art Directors Guild uh, Costume Designers booth at um, booth B3 on the exhibition floor. And I think it's pretty much close to that end if I'm not turned around too much. And uh, uh, we've been, um, I would say, gifted. We've been loaned out uh, Wacom uh, drawing, uh, digital drawing tools to do a little fun little thing for you. Um, so if you want to join us there, and if you can't do it um, uh, right after the panel, uh, all through the rest of the convention, people will be doing uh, art demonstrations there. So if you want to actually get some free tips, uh, I encourage you to do that. Now, to get your uh, enthusiasm up, uh, how many people uh, like a little TV show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer? So how would you like to meet the art department that put that on for so many years? Well, uh, you can tonight at 7 p.m. <laughs> um, and they're going to be at uh, room 29 A and B, and that's the art department of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And if you can't wait till 7, you're just mm, uh, They actually will be giving uh, autographs in the pavilion, the sales pavilion, uh, that direction, at, uh, from 5.30 to 6.30 at uh, table double A zero four. So you can uh, actually see them up close in their natural habitat. Um, and then tomorrow at noon at room 23 A, B, and C, the production designers, uh, the Art Directors Guild, are going to be giving a presentation and uh, they will have autographs immediately after uh, from two to three, triple uh, A, 06 table at the sales pavilion. So um, if you uh, are not taking notes, but would like to find out this information later, you can follow us and everything I just said on Twitter and Instagram at ADG800 and hash hashtag ADG Comic Con. Okay, so we are here uh, thanks to the San Diego Comic Con and the Art Directors Guild Local 800 of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. And uh, I'd like to say that everybody here on this panel are the best at what they do. Woo! So you're not getting the, the people just starting, you're getting the best people. and. Um, not only are they excellent artists, but more importantly for film, they are storytellers. So uh, let's have a look. Can we hit that? Uh, can we hit that DVD?
Okay. So, I'd like to introduce the people who did all that work. Um, we have Jane Wu. <laughs> Tani Kunitaki. Andy Park. And Monty Granito. I'm Tim Burgard. Hi. Um, usually, uh, this, uh, the questions are usually simple because uh, uh, when I ask them these questions, these three questions, generally we can go on and on. So essentially, the first question is always, how did you get in this business? And I'd like to see if Jane could start. Um, I totally, can you hear me? Yes. I totally got into this business by accident, like how everybody does. Oh, sorry, Mike. Mike? I didn't know. This one? Hello? Um, I got into this business by accident, actually. Um, I studied fashion design, so I shouldn't be doing that. But um, in high school, uh, somebody gave me X-Men. I went, what is this? And got into comic books and had a comic book store. Uh, and then fell into comic book illustrating for this like stint and then got into storytelling and then got into animation and got into um, animated storytelling or anima animated boards and then took a left turn and started my career at uh, Marvel with Avengers and the rest of that, here I am. So I don't know how I landed here really. <laughs> so the answer is you start at the top. <laughs> All right, Tony. Oh, good. Um, you know, as probably everybody here, we just started off drawing kind of like all our lives. And then uh, I started off uh, actually in industrial design. So I designed cars for like Ford and Honda and then came, make my way over here to, you know, California. And then I, I jumped off that ship and started into animation, like designing, you know, yeah, you know, cars and spaceships and guns and everything for animation, and then finally, like, I crossed over and uh, and then started working on uh, you know feature films, and uh, I just got pretty lucky on that. Actually, I worked. Uh, I think one of my first ones was Tim. On, oh, that, was that uh, your first? Yeah, and Batman and Robin. Right? Batman and Robin. <laughs> so that At was least like something my, good my came out of one. it. <laughs> <laughs> It was fun to work, and I, I didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, but uh, but actually, the next movie I worked on after that was like one of the first, I guess, Marvel movies was Blade. So I think, and then after that, just yeah, on and on. But yeah, you're kind of omitting a really big one, <laughs> a really big one, sort of a, uh, a giant M. He, he, he designed a lot of the stuff in the Matrix. That was, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I got to check off. I designed a spaceship. <laughs> okay, uh, Andy? Hi, I started my career as a comic book artist. Um, got hired back in, well, I don't want to say the year, year but for um, Rob Liefeld's Extreme Studios back in the old Image Comics days. Um, I, and I did comics for about 10 years, you know, drawing for Rob. I, I worked for Top Cow, drawing the Top Tomb Raider series, did some Marvel work on X-Men. And then I made a switch to do concept art. And I, my first job in concept art was working at Sony on the God of War games. And then around 2010, Marvel Studios, um, they decided that they wanted to create an in-house group of artists. And they had two artists named uh, Charlie Wynn and Ryan Minarding. And um, they, Kevin Feige and the executives basically commissioned them to like, okay, let's create an in-house group of artists because we have this whole connected universe. And they called me up because I worked with them on the God of War games. So it's all, you know, it's who you know. But um, yeah, so they, I was the first one they hired and I've been working on all the Marvel films since the first Captain America. So for about seven plus years, so. All right. Okay, Monty. Um, so I, I started in New York um, studying to be a traditional animator, and then traditional animation died around that time. And so I started to learn 3D, and 
Uh, luckily enough, this previs company, I didn't even know there were jobs in movies like this. And then this previs company was in New York looking for someone on this film called uh, Stay. It was Newman Gregor, no one watched it. But, um, but it was a job and I took the job and it did very badly. But because I knew that company and that job, another company had called me. And so then I flew out here with like, uh, no apartment and nowhere to be or whatever, but I had a job. And then I had to get a driver's license and an apartment. And then, um, so I did previs after that for like 15 years and I switched to um, boards and animation when they started becoming more animated. And so then I got to finally start to do more of the traditional animation stuff again. You know, so it all comes full circle after a few years. But like, uh, yeah, it was just luck. And, and also just looking at every website for every possible job and stuff. Well, I got started with uh, painting in caves, <laughs> and um, after a few thousand years, uh, actually, I got started oddly enough in comic books, and uh, that's hard for a person in from Orange County uh, to uh, make any connection with New York City. So uh, that was few and far between. But um, I ended up going from there to working at Hanna-Barbera and uh, spending some time in the, uh, the salt mines of the Saturday morning animation um, uh, industry. And uh, eventually, um, I kind of worked my way through commercials and stuff to working into uh, live action film and uh, uh, Stargate was the one that put me in the union and after that, uh, uh, it's all been gravy. Including, including Batman and Robin. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, since we're, we're naming names, I'd um, uh, like to see if anybody has a favorite, you know, film that they worked on. And uh, Jane, you got, you've, you've got like a couple at least going on here. You got started with Avengers. Oh my God, that'd be top of anybody's list. But um, I'd have to say it wasn't a film. It was actually a little TV show called Game of Thrones. Oh my God. <laughs> well, um, I just got through working on season seven uh, on Game of Thrones, and it was fun because it puts it put me together with my my favorite directors and um, also my partner. Uh, but. It was such a grueling schedule because it was my first TV show ever. But it's not really a TV show. It's it's they want feature quality in like this much time. So um, that was a real challenge. And then to work with all these professional. I mean, to see the stunt coordinator come in and yeah, yeah, we know what to do. And this guy's gonna fall like the and then just the set, the the production team and. Just seeing that clockwork, it was just amazing, you know? Uh, did you work in more than one country, or did you...? Yeah, we were in Belfast for a long time, and then we were in Iceland. Whoa. So, storyboarding for... I learned something. Storyboarding for snow scene, you know, I designed a dolly track, and then the director goes, where are you going to put the dolly track on snow? I'm like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> You know, you don't think about things like that, but, um, you know, because a lot of the films we end up doing are very kind of studio contained, green screen, uh, so we can make anything happen, but Game of Thrones is so on set that I forgot there's weather, and there's elements that you have to think about, you know. So, so you had to design a, a, a ski, a, a snow ski shot or a, or a, or a snowshoe shot. No, I think it ended up to be a camera with a very long lens and uh, I don't know, you can ask the director later. I awesome, I'm looking forward to it. I, I saw the first episode, I loved it. Yeah, so, uh, Tony, what was your favorite? Uh, the Matrix. <laughs> no, that was, that was like, like a really awesome experience. Uh, and um, actually, like, like, it was back in the day where Sometimes they send you to screenplay and then ask if you want to work on it. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. Yeah, but uh, but it was a really tiny, tiny crew. There was like only like ten of us in the office, and we managed to storyboard the entire film and design it, do all the concepts and everything, do all the stuff that. And we did this like over a period of like seven months or so, and then they canceled our show. But then, you know, maybe about 
five months later, I got resurrected. So got lucky there. And uh, it was just, uh, just a really good collaborative imagination was going crazy because the directors didn't want, you know, um, the Wachowskis didn't want it to be done in a normal format. They almost wanted it, like, do it in any format. We'll figure out how we're going to have the technology to do it later. So it was just pure narrative, you know, illustrating the story out and telling that. But uh, I think that was, uh, I, that was my favorite. I think that's probably a lot of people's favorites. All right, Andy? Um, it's it's kind of like picking who your favorite child is. You know, it's, yeah. it's difficult. We all do that. I'll pick one. <laughs> um, who we like. I know. For me, cause, because of my background, like, and I grew up in the 80s um, as a Marvel comic reader and a fan, and my favorite was always like Iron Man and, uh, and Avengers, and talking to my friends is always like, there's you know, we're never going to see an, an Avengers film. You know, it's like it's impossible. You can't have it with all these main, very different, you know, main heroes. So um, when I got hired in 2010, it was even though I started working on Captain America, it was specifically for the Avengers. So um, I remember those first couple weeks, and I was in a little office by myself, like working on the Avengers, designing. Like we, between me, Ryan, and Charlie, we. We spent a week, okay, this week we're doing designs on Captain America. And then the next week, and then Joss would look at it. Next week we're going to do uh, um, uh, Hawkeye. Next week we're going to do Black Widow. Next week we're going to do you know, all the different characters. But there would be so many times I'd be sitting in the office painting Captain America. And then I'd be like realizing what I'm doing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm like working on the Avengers. And then, <laughs> and then I start painting, you know, and then I'd have to, I'd get chills again and be like, I'm working for Joss Whedon, you know. <laughs> I'm a huge Buffy fan, Firefly. Um, so, yeah, that that movie, and then when the movie came out and became a success, like that was a really special time. So, yeah, that's probably my favorite. Okay, all right, Monty. Um, mine was um, uh, Captain America: The Winter Soldier, and uh, for that one, I was the previs supervisor. And I'm not going to get into what previs is. It's just like a 3D animated version of the movie. And so the reason that was my favorite is because we we got to design kind of like a lot of the world. Because the first Captain America, if you watch it, there's not a lot of uh, VFX in what Captain America's doing. It's very like sped up footage kind of stuff. So we got, we got to design like how he moves. You know, it's kind of like that um, just, not super strength, but kind of like still grounded in reality. Because the directors were always like uh, the Russos, who I worked with on Cap, Winter Soldier, and then Civil War, and then the, the Infinity War. Um, they were always like try to keep it grounded and, and 70s and thriller for some reason. Uh, but it worked. It worked for Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And so we got to design like the new way he moves. So now in all the movies, he moves in that sort of like hyper real way that still feels alive. And then we also got to design how Falcon would move because they were like, well, he's got wings, so he's not Iron Man. And uh, so we designed all this really cool stuff, and there was this uh, producer, I'm not gonna mention his name, but like, he looked at it and he was like, we have to dial that back, he can't be cooler than Cap. <laughs> and so, and so we, 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 we had to kind of dial back how Falcon was a little bit, but he was still really cool, and then in Civil War they kind of went off and made him awesome. Um, but so a lot of these sequences we designed um, for just testing out how Falcon would fly and how he would fight with people um, actually became this the, what's in the movie the whole flying onto the thing kicking off they just put that in the script and so we got to play with that and we got to play with how to create an emotional moment out of all this fighting and destruction and so we got to play with the whole cap ending and and without any boards we just kind of like animated it and shot it, you know, as he's falling into the water and Bucky looks at him and he looks up and all that stuff. It was just great. Like normally previs, you don't get to play with those story elements. And so it was it was great. And we had uh, up to 20 people on the job and it was just like the best job ever. I, although all jobs are great and happy and important, but like for me that was like, we had our hands on every little piece and it was just great. Okay, well, um, as for me, uh, I've noticed that um, the better the project, the worst time I have personally on it. Uh, and, and it. And it runs the other way. I mean, when we were on Batman and Robin, we had three-hour lunches. Nobody gave a crap what we were doing. <laughs> 
Tawny actually took naps under the table. We had one person come in looking for Tawny, and we had to say, oh, we think he's in the bathroom. He was sleeping underneath the table, and we didn't want to bust him right there. And uh, so I had a lot of fun, you know. I, I can't watch the movie, you know. It's 15 minutes, and that's about as much as I can go into it. And, and we were both on um, uh, uh, Mask 2, and that only lasted in theaters about two weeks out here. We spent at least a couple of months. We had a great time in Sydney. Holy crap, man. I did a walkabout. I, got, I went to, you know, Ayers Rock or Uluru and uh, New Zealand, all kinds of stuff. I had a grand old time. It just it was a piece of crap. <laughs> and on the other side, I worked on uh, uh, Jurassic World, which is my bucket list, a movie about dinosaurs. And second day there, my 65 Mustang gets crashed into and behind by a delivery truck. And, uh, you know, my neck wasn't feeling too great after that either. So, you know, it's... Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> uh, I, so my answer is The Patriot, because I like the movie Nothing Bad Happened to Me. <laughs> okay, so uh, you guys really kind of covered some of this, but I still think it's a good uh, question. Is that What's the difference for you working on a comic book inspired film as opposed to any other genre you've worked on? And uh, I mean, Jane's already mentioned she worked on uh, uh, Game of Thrones, which is not exactly Avengers, you know. So, uh, do you have any other uh, thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think you know, coming from also a comic book background, there is a sensibility to a lot of the compositions that those of us that grew up with comic books know that we have to hit um, because those are the iconic shots that we also want to see and bring to the screen. But what's interesting about working on non-comic book um, materials is that it's live action. Because, I mean, honestly, our Marvel films, are it's, it's like half animated, right? Um, so that didn't depart, or that, that wasn't as different as a lot of the animated films that I work on as far as comp shot compositions and what I can and cannot do. But when you work on Game of Thrones and it is live action, you know, you're, you don't have a magic camera. You know, you really have to work with the type of cameras that you have. You have to know your cameras. You have to know what are available to you for storytelling. And then, so emotionally, it <clears throat> excuse me, it, it's it's different because it is pure live action. I mean, the dragon is CG. That's about it. But I mean, there's no like big Hulk, and there's no a guy in a suit or anything. It's all real people standing there. So. Um, I think those. I think that's the stark difference: is, is the is the the grounded reality versus the uh, a comic book film, which is still one foot in animated. Yes, yeah, so the shooting for practical pur purposes, it, boring it, for practical purposes. It's not even practical. It's also um, the type of the type of take or the type of storytelling Ooh, yeah. tools. It's right. It, it can't be as broad as, as comic book. Right. You don't, you, not as, you're, you're in a fantasy world that you have to sell as real right. as opposed to a real world that you're kind of given and then you're just adding fantasy elements to right, that. Right, so, right, yeah. right. All right, Tani, how about you? Um, I guess uh, like with working with uh, comics, it's, you know, growing up and like you know you're growing up in the 80s with comics and you're fans of them and uh, and then when you get a chance to work on the film it's kind of like uh, making sure that legacy carries on you know, like whatever those things uh, you know the stories the characters can uh, what that gave you when you were a, a reader you want to be able to deliver it to in this other medium that was you know just as important and uh, yeah, you know, I, I had fun in the last last few years because I was able to work on um, on a homecoming, you know, and that really felt like the comic book I read back there was you know the young Peter Parker, you know, fighting you know adults, and then and then you had uh, and then another another title I had really fun working on was Black Panther, so that was that was really fun because we got to you know go into dark Africa and and then uh, really have these. Uh, really have them shine there and uh, no, that was that was a lot of fun and then uh, and and also like I really had a great time 
like re-envisioning or bringing a little bit over from the from the old comic book, the the Quinjet, because I got to work on First Avengers and I got to design that thing and and uh, pretty happy about that because they are able to use an agent shield and bring it over to Captain America, so I'm pretty happy about that one. But uh, but I mean it's great. It's like I'm a fan. I never thought that they would make these comic book movies. You know, I yeah. thought that would be impossible. And then finally, it came to an age where we were able to realize all that stuff. So. Yeah, because you and I essentially worked on like the Adam West style Batman. You know, it's like that was what was. <laughs> right, Andy. What was the question again? Well, Andy, it's uh, it, for you. Um, you know, you you're doing uh, development artwork. So, uh, have, have you worked on any projects besides uh, comic book projects? I know everything I do. Uh, I start off my career comics, I guess video games, you know, so des designing characters for video games, I guess I'll compare that so to So you live more action. hard sci-fi type of stuff as opposed well, to... Like well, that one was like fantasy, like all the like God of War, so oh. Greek, you know, mythology. Oh, that's awesome like Minotaurs too. and, you know, but you know, when you're designing for video games, you can design however you want. You don't, you're not thinking about like, how's he going to lift up his arm, you know, um, portions. So working on these um, comic book films, live action, so much of my job is designing the costumes on real actors, so what you saw there, you know, I, we, that's the first step. You know, we design the co concept, it gets approved, and the other part of my job is to work alongside the costume designer, and um, they start, you know, making it, designing it, ma manufacturing it, you know, I'll go to the fittings with the actor, and then a lot of times you'll have to make adjustments, because you're like, in the painting, it, can, it looks cool, but then you're like, it won't work because of this. So, you know, a lot of times I'll do paint overs, you know, we'll, or we'll, on the spot we'll figure out, I think we need to adjust this in order to make, so that Paul Rudd can lift up his arm, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, take into account the real actor, you know, right, right. and what looks good on, you know, because every actor has different body type. So what, look good, what looks good on Paul Rudd doesn't necessarily look good on like Chris Evans. So. Yeah. Okay, um, but before Monty uh, 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 answers, uh, if you have questions, start lining up because we're, we're, we're getting to that point. And I want to see if I can get as many of you as I can uh, so you can answer, your, answer the question. Monty, uh, anything about the, the genre? That, uh, um, well, it, it, in, in my experience, because my work is mostly animated, and I've done a lot of stuff in non-comic book movies that's animated, where you wouldn't think it would be. So it's like we used to previs, um, like I did previs for 42, the baseball movie. Did a bunch of Jackie Robinson doing baseball stuff, just so we could see what the different baseball parks would look like and how many VFX shots we'd need. Uh, I did a lot of I, I'm, I Am Legend stuff, so it's like, um, so we did a lot of I Am Legend and worked out the horror and stuff. So each project because it's animated I feel like has a different um, it's it's very cinematic and and the mood is very important so because I started out as a comic book artist and I, I interned at Marvel until I realized that when I was interning at Marvel comics were dying at the time so that was like the nine you know it was just bad timing all around so I was interning at Marvel uh, and so like that's all I wanted to do was be a comic book artist and so when I get on a comic book movie it's a different hat it's like I'm trying to be a comic book artist and do the movie at the same time. Because comic book movies, like Jane was saying, you can have a different feel to the camera. The camera's almost a character in a comic book movie. It's like a live, it's like a live. It can see anything. So it's like if, you know, no matter how fast Iron Man's coming through, you can kind of catch up to him. Whereas in a, a movie like I Am Legend, you would give the camera much more weight and it would have to like be a little more realistic and slow. So. Every live action movie, I kind of put a different director hat on a little bit to be like, oh, well, how would this director actually shoot this movie? How can the camera move uh, through space? How fast would the characters move? And so you kind of in live action have to bring everything down and give it that weight. Whereas in comic books, you can have a little more just like I'm a kid playing in a candy store. I could do whatever. Falcon could do whatever. The cameras can do whatever. And when you're doing something like... Um, like uh, I Am Legend or like, you know, um, a Panic Room or something like that. It's all very planned out. It's all very structured. It's all very 
whatever the mood is. Like Charlotte's Web, I, did, I worked a lot on Charlotte's Web, and, and that mood was totally different than the mood from a Marvel movie, because even though Charlotte is a, a fictional character, she's alive in a live world. And whereas a spider in a, a Spider Man can move faster than Charlotte can, so so you know you you, you kind of compare all these things, and um, but so yeah, so it's but, really about mood. Yeah, but uh, Spider Man can't give birth to thousands of little Spider-Mans. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, so that's pretty much it. It's, it, it. The mood and weight of everything is a little different in a live action uh, versus a comic book movie. And you just feel like more of an adult. Like I feel like I'm trying to be like the Coen brothers when I'm working on a live action movie. Whereas when I'm working on a, 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 a comic book movie, I'm trying to be Norm Breifogel. You know, you know it's just different. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, you can step up and ask a question. First off, uh, that's some really amazing work you guys have produced up there. Can you get closer to the mic, please? Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so some amazing work. Thank you so much for presenting that today. Um, as somebody who was kind of drugged into another discipline, uh, compositing, um, how would you uh, be able to describe kind of your transitions to other forms? Like, I'd like to get into previs or storyboarding at this point. How would you talk to an artist that has a portfolio in one discipline who's looking to maybe convince somebody to let him move into another discipline? Well, obviously, um, being able to do the job and you know, and uh, uh, showing you have some aptitude for it is is part of it. And the next part of it is who do you know? And the part after that is how do I get hired? You know, and. Um, uh, I'll, I'll make one little announcement for those of the, who are thinking that I, you know what, I want to do this, but how do I, this measly mortal person, ever get to work in film? Well, um, if you can do the job, the opportunities now are a lot more open than they used to be. If you can get the job, uh, even on a, a union show, and you're the only one who they hire that isn't already a union member, you can get the job. So having the skills is now enough if you can get in there and talk to either the director or the production manager, whoever is doing the hiring at the time. The other thing would be to get involved with um, uh, like Rhythm and Hughes or D Digital Domain or some other company. I know people who are working uh, who at some point were hired by Lucasfilm or something like that as a you know, just working visual effects. So there are ways of doing it. I mean, obviously none of us can just say, you are now in the business, you know, it's not doesn't work You're now way. in the business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, you could talk to us later if you want to, um, you know, pick our brains a little bit more. So thank you. Can we get the next person? Hey, uh, guys and gal. Um, thank you for coming out and doing this. You know, uh, I'm sure for me as well as everyone else, this is like, a big deal, of course, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't, but um, do you guys have any, uh, like, uh, a drive to do any personal work, or do you have your own ideas? Because I heard a lot of you getting into this through, like, comic books, right? And I kind of got into it more like, oh, I have these ideas, and I really want to put them out there. So I'm just curious if that's something that you guys still pursue, or if it's something that you guys are fulfilled enough from just you know, like making Spider-Man come to life. Uh, Jane, you want to start with that? Do you have any personal projects that you're working on? Or? Um, I'm working so much and I have a family to raise and three crazy dogs and a mortgage, so I wish I had time. Um, so if she loses a dog, she can do a comic book. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think it would be nice to, to be able to tap into my own creative um, you know, needs or what have you, but I, I honestly work so much, I don't have time, though my partner and I are thinking about doing graphic novels and other things story related, related but like, you know, it's, it's hard doing a graphic novel, it's a lot of work. So no, if, if I like sleep more. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Sleep's gonna over. Sleep's gonna win for right now. All right, Tiny. You have any personal projects or? Yeah, I miss. I miss sleep. Um, I'm working, uh, you know, with a producer, actress, and 
friend here, uh, we're, we're working on this uh, project, Cerulean. And it's on the side, we're doing a comic book, trying to get, trying to get interest or see how, if we could get it published. And uh, we're starting off on that. And it's it, you know, a personal project. And we've been through some, like a failed Kickstarter already. And, uh, but we, we've got it circulating now where it's, where it's being discussed and uh, reviewed now in some areas. But it, yeah, yeah. I, uh, actually, uh, a friend here, uh, Danny Swan, is one that prompted all that to uh, you know, start addressing like, personal projects. And uh, we're teaming up and trying to make that happen, yeah, you know, alongside all the fun stuff, you know. And uh, I'm still doing this, and uh, it's still fun, you know, illustrating some, you know, childhood dreams or being able to, you know, do things you, you know, you know, wish you could. I mean, it's it's great though. I mean, you're you're actually fulfilling something you thought you could never do in the past. So, um, Andy. Yeah, I think a lot of artists, like, we have, like, I have stories in my head, and a lot of times in the drive home, you know, I start, I have an idea, and then I press record on my phone and talk to myself. But, um, yeah, I definitely want to do my own, like, graphic novel, my own story in the future. It's just, it is a time thing, and it's a money thing. Like, I got two kids as well, and, I, you know, I can't, it's, it's so much work. Like, after I drew Tomb Raider, I actually started my own comic book. I drew the first issue. And then after I finished it, I lost confidence because I was like, I've never written before. Like, you know, how do I know that this is any good, right? So I, I you know, I stopped and, yeah. But in the future, I, I definitely, you know, would love to do something. All right, Body. I, I mean, and, and that's the thing, that is that like so much of having a new project is being a writer. Like, you, you want to make a movie or a graphic novel or whatever, you, you have to like kind of like rejigger yourself and kind of learn how to study to be a writer. And, and that's kind of the same thing with the, the guy who was talking, the comp, the guy who was talking about previs. And please see me after, because I, I could help you with a lot of things if, you know, whatever. But like, you know, you always have to be, like, if you want to go side to side or do your own project, you always have to be a self-starter. And it has to be something that you just can't go to sleep on. Uh, that's, I do the same thing. It's like I have tons of projects, but like your hand is so tired from the day of working like this all day that you don't have the almost energy or inclination to stand in front of a screen at night. So I started writing music on the side. Um, I'll sell my CD outside. No, I'm like kidding. I'm not, I don't have a CD. But, uh, but like, so I, I, I really learned and researched because I just, you know, a lot of these people here, and, and I'm sure all of you, you, you have this creative drive that like you want to make something. So it's like music is a little more fun, it's a little less in front of a screen, and so I write horrible songs. Maybe someday they'll be good, but for right now, it's just a creative outlet. Um, so it's like, yeah, I feel like we all need to create. It's just a question of if we have the time and energy and effort and the ability to learn what we want to do. Yeah, if you, you know, if you could do something that kind of renews you rather than just kind of adds to the <laughs> adds to the tiredness. <laughs> All right, well, that, I hope that answered your question. Uh, next person up, please. Uh, hi, um, I'm, a, I'm a movie critic, and I just want you to know. Oh, we, boo. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yes, I'm on Rotten Tomatoes, all of that, but I want you to know we pay attention, and we really, really appreciate what you do. We are really aware of the contribution you make, so I want to thank you for that. I wish somebody would speak like that to the publishers because all I ever see is the making of these books is just the actors in and out of costumes and that's about it. I, I come to this, I don't go to Hall H because I love you guys, I really do. Aww, so thank you. I, 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 um, I have a question for Andy. Um, I'm a big fan of the Marvel movies and one of the things that I like is that they're able to make such a distinctive look for each of those worlds, Ant-Man versus Thor versus Captain America and yet we do believe they're all in the same universe. So can you tell me a little bit about how much coordination goes on uh, in, in these very highly individual projects? How much coordination goes on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, between the different projects? Okay, well, we have five minutes, so this is going to be the last question. Oh, okay. Well, you can answer fast. Then. Okay. I'll try to make it fast. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, it comes down to Kevin Feige. You know, it, it, the fact that this, I think what makes Marvel special is you, you have someone like that who's a visionary, who's a comic book fan, who knows the source material. So he's the glue, you know? So he hires all different directors um, that all have their own flavor, their own sensibilities. But, you know, if you didn't have that kind of leader at the helm, 
like it would just be jumbled because everyone has their own take and own take on you know if you watch one captain america and the next one's like completely you know, you know it's, a, it's a different flavor of the rooster brothers but it's still the same character but you know he added to it so i think it's it comes down to kevin Feige. thank you very much yeah. Yeah, and just just to chime in, uh, totally, he's totally right. You need that head because I've worked over different comic book movies at different studios that either don't trust the character or there's no head watching everything. Where it's like you would say something like, "This person can't be more powerful than this person," and that's that's totally why they've been so totally successful. Yeah, or the decisions are made by executives who it's more about money or business rather than Kevin thinks about that too. But it's really a uh, you know cre he's thinking creatively, you know. Okay, well, I'd like to, um, you get, you get oh, you do have time? All right, go ahead. Speak fast. Okay, I Starting now. But just one broad one that a lot of people could probably use is, nowadays, we're not sure what to do with our portfolios. Generalists or specified uh, focus with our work? Um, <clears throat> I like to answer that because I'm always telling my students uh, that you do need to focus your skill set. Um, if you're a storyboarder, it is what makes you different. Or if you're a production designer, what makes you different? If you're a costume designer, what makes you different? And what puts you in a certain niche? niche? Because there's so many specific genre in movies right now. And honestly, when they're looking to, to hire somebody, they want to know what you who you are and get you in a couple of seconds because there's stacks of portfolio that you're looking at that, that they're looking at so the quick the, the more focused you can be the, I think the more you can stand out that, that's one piece of advice that's probably and also interview for the job you want I mean uh, if you want to be a storyboard artist don't throw life drawing in in there don't don't throw super paintings in there because no one wants to hire somebody to storyboard with oil paints, you know, because <laughs> uh, they don't dry fast and they get the <laughs> the copier gets mecked, mocked up. And <laughs> okay, um, I, I, w I want to uh, thank my guests. And before you go, I just want to remind you that we got the Buffy uh, panel at 7 p.m. and we have uh, this uh, the production designers tomorrow at noon and they're all in your program book. And if you want to come see me do a demo uh, right after this, I'm going to be downstairs uh, at the booth at B3. You can see it, it we have a, uh, uh, the costume designers have a uh, copy of the uh, Wonder Woman costume. They're at the booth. And um, if you're a size 14, you can try it on. No, I don't know. Uh, so thank you, Jane Wu. Tani Kudataki, Annie Park, and Monte Granito. Tim Burgard, bye.